Hi everyone, my name is Tan Ling Ling. I'm a research fellow from National University of Malaysia. The title of my lecture today is The Principles of Optical and Electrochemical Sensors and Bar Sensors. Nowadays, the demands for sensor and bar sensor devices has increased mainly for the understanding of various chemical and biological processes and developing chemical and biotechnological devices. The key lies in their ability to specifically, rapidly, and sensitively quantify the concentrations of analyte of interest. Many researchers around the world have been done in the area of advancing chemical sensor or biosensor technology due to their potential application ranging from home cell checking like glucose meter to on-site testing such as the portable TDS meter for water analysis and emerging room screening as well as continuous timely in vivo monitoring system such as the oxygen monitoring system commonly used in the hospital. A successfully developed sensor or power sensor must possess at least some of the following beneficial features where the chemical or biocatalyst must be highly specific and show good stability over a large number of assays. Secondly, the reaction should be independent without the need of stirring, pH and temperature adjustment and allows analysis of sample with minimal pretreatment. The sensor bar sensor gives accurate, precise, reproducible, and real-time detections, and the dynamic linear response range covers the useful analytical range without dilutions or concentration step. The probe means the sensor or bar sensor should be small and biocompatible, having no toxic or antigenic effects. The complete bar sensor should be small portable, inexpensive, and easy to operate. And lastly, there should be a market for the sensor or power sensor you develop, whereby you must consider the market demand and commercialization potential of your developed sensor. In general, sensor is a device that converts non-electrical signals such as chemical response or biological response into electrical signal. And the term chemical sensor or bio sensor is often used to cover sensor devices used in order to determine the concentrations of chemical or biological substances of interest. Ideally, sensor should be a small device that can be used for field testing for direct measurement of analyte in the complex metric without the need of reagent, sample pretreatment, and extraction step. This schematic diagram showing the main components of a sensor or bar sensor, the receptor phase, which refers to the chemical or bar catalyst layer, would first convert the substrate to product. Th these reactions is then determined by the transducer, which converts it to an electrical signal. The output from the transducer is then amplified, processed, and displayed at the readout. Now the key part of a sensor or bar sensor is the transducer, which makes you of the physical change accompany the reactions and converts it into electrical signal. Sensor can be categorized into chemical sensor and bar sensor. Chemical sensor consists of a transduction element that is covered by a chemical recognition layer. This chemical sensing layer can be developed by immobilizing chemical reagent into or onto a solid support material, and it is typically a polymer material. This chemical sensing layer will interact with the target and light, and the chemical response resulted from the chemical reactions will then be translated by the transduction element into electrical signal. For optical chemical sensor, the transduction element can be the absorption spectroscopy, fluorescence spectroscopy, or reflectance spectroscopy, depending on the op optical characteristic of the chemical reaction and physical properties of the immobilization matrix used. Whilst in electrochemical sensor, the transduction element will be the electrode, in order to affect the electrochemical signal, the reactant and the product, or one of them, must be redox active. Bar sensor, on the other hand, is constructed by immobilizing biological molecules such as enzyme, antibody, whole cell, microorganism, tissue, or DNA at a suitable transducer, which converts the biorecognition event into a quantitative optical or electrochemical response that relates to the concentrations of analyte. 
two general categories about sensor, which may be differentiated depending on the nature of the biological recognition process, namely catalytic bowel sensor and affinity bowel sensor. Catalytic bowel sensor is where the immobilized biological molecules such as enzyme, cell bacteria, or tissue reacts with target enzyme and changes it to other some substances. Whereas affinity bowel sensor involves the formations of simple bonding between the immobilized biological molecule and target molecule, such as the interactions between antibody and antigen and DNA probe, which is complementary DNA fragment. For antibody, they are bound to the antigen to weak chemical interactions or non-covalent interactions such as the electrostatic interaction, hydrogen bond, Van der Waals forces, and hydrophobic interactions, while DNA is bind to each other while hydrogen bonds. The successfully developed chemical sensor or bulk sensor is depends on the immobilization of the receptive layer, whereby the objective of immobilization step is to produce a regular system from the intimate contact between the immobilized chemical or biological molecules on the transducer surface while maintaining the stability of the immobilized molecule to allow efficient transductions of the chemical or biorecognition event. Now, what is Immobilization. Immobilization is defined as the imprisonment of chemical or biological molecules, those sensing molecules, in a distinct support of matrix. The support of matrix on which the sensing molecules are immobilized allows the exchange of medium containing substrate, the analyte or inhibitor molecule. The support of matrix used in the immobilization should hold the sensing molecules permanently or temporarily for a brief period of time. The matrix used should be cheap and easily available, and the eruptions with the components of the medium or with the sensing molecules should be minimum as possible. The support or matrices used in the immobilizations of sensing molecules are grouped into three major categories, the natural polymer, synthetic polymers, and inorganic materials. Natural polymers are mostly derived from plants such as arginex from the cell wall of some algae, and carrageena from red algae. Starch and pectins are polysaccharides of plants found in their primary cell wall, Whereas chitosan and chitin are polysaccharides occurring naturally in the cell wall of fungus and the exoskeleton of arthropods, such as the skin or the shell of lobster, crabs, spider, and some other insects. Collagen can be derived from both plants and fish. Gelatin is a partially hydrolyzed collagen. Cellulose, the most abundant polymer of nature from the plants, and it is a cheaper support. All these natural polymers are inert with good porosity and have good water holding capacity, rendering them suitable to be used as a support for sensing molecule. Synthetic polymers are those ion exchange resin or polymers, those insoluble support with porous surface. Inorganic materials are such as geolites, ceramics, silica, glass, activated carbons, charcoal and so on. They are microporous root absorbing properties and are resistant to high pH and temperature. Adsorption is the oldest and simplest method used in the immobilization technology. In this method, sensing molecules are only absorbed on the external surface of the support and there is no permanent bond formation between the carrier and the sensing molecules in adsorption method. Only weak bonds like ionic interactions, hydrogen bonds and vena walls forces are mainly involved. The greatest advantage of adsorption method is that there will not be poor diffusion limitations since the sensing molecules are not embedded within the support or matrices, whereas they are immobilized externally on the support or the carrier. Since this method is easy to carry out simply by dropping the sensing molecules on the supporting matrix, because adsorption methods involves no additional region to activate any functional groups, therefore no additional regions are required for activation step purposes. Thus, adsorption method is comparatively cheap method of anabolic immobilization. Since this method does not disturb any functional groups of biological molecules, therefore it is less destructive to biological molecules than chemical method, which is the covalent bond method.
covalent bonding method is one of the widely used methods of biological molecules immobilization, especially enzyme immobilization. It involves the formations of covalent bonds between the chemical groups in the sensing molecules and the chemical groups in the support or carrier. Because carboxyl and amine groups in biological molecules can form covalent bonds easily with the support or carrier, chemical groups in the supporting material that can form covalent bonds with biological molecules are such as amino, imino, hydroxyl, carboxyl, thio, methyl, guanidyl imidazole, and phenolene. The advantages of covalent bonding immobilization method are the strong linkage formed between the sensing molecules and the support, leading to no leakage or desorption problem. It is also a comparatively cheap method. Due to a variety of support with different functional groups available, it renders covalent bonding immobilization methods has wide applicability. However, the major problem of covalent bonding method is that the chemical modifications of enzyme could result in the loss of functional conformations of enzyme, whereby the enzyme active site becomes inactivated due to the conformational change in enzyme. And treatment. In this method, sensing molecules are physically entrapped inside a porous matrix. The bonding involved in stabilizing the sensing molecules within the matrix may be covalent or non-covalent bonds. Normally, the matrix used in the entrapment method will be a water-soluble polymer in order to allow diffusions of reactants or analyte through the matrix to affect the chemical or biological uh, reactions with the immobilized sensing molecules embedded in the polymer matrix. The pore size of the matrix can be adjusted with the concentrations of the polymer used to prevent the loss of sensing molecules. The greatest of disadvantages of these methods are that there is a possibility of leakage of sensing molecules from the polymer matrix and the pore diffusion limitations is depending on the degree of hydrophilicity or hydrophobicity of the polymer matrix used. And treatment immobilization methods is generally fast, cheap, and easy to practice at small scale with only moral conditions are required. For example, simply by mixing or stirring the sensing molecule solutions with polymer matrix until a homogeneous phase obtained. As no chemical modifications is done over the biological molecules, especially for enzyme molecules. Therefore, less chance of conformation and changes in biological molecules such as enzyme will occur. Core polymerization. This method is also called as cross-linking. In this immobilization method, sensing molecules are directly linked by covalent bonds between various functional groups of sensing molecules via polyfunctional regions. Glutadehyde and diazonium salts are the commonly used polyfunctional reagents. Unlike other immobilization methods, there is no matrix or support involved in this method. The greatest disadvantage or the demerit of this method is that the polyfunctional reagents used for cross-linking the enzyme molecules may denature or structurally modify the enzyme, leading to loss of catalytic properties of the immobilized enzyme. Encapsulation. This type of immobilization is done by enclosing the sensing molecule in a membrane capsule. The capsule is usually made up of semi-permeable membrane like nitro, cellulose, or nylon. In this immobilization method, the effectiveness of the resulting bulk sensor is depending upon the stability of sensing molecules inside the capsule. Encapsulation immobilization method is a cheap and simple method, and large quantity of sensing molecules can be immobilized by this method. However, pore size limitation is an issue due to the semi permeable membrane capsule that allows only small analyte or substrate molecule to cross the membranes. As I have mentioned in the beginning of this lecture, the type of optical transducer used for optical sensing is depends on the optical characteristic of the chemical reagent and the physical properties of the immobilization matrix used. If a fluorescent reveling reagent is used for sensing of analyte of interest or the sensing mechanism involves the formations of the fluorescent compound or there is emission of fluorescent quantum dot materials, a fluorescent spectrometer could be used for measurements of its emission. 
when the immobilized chemical reagent show changes of color before and after reactions with the target analyte on the transparent material, and UEV spectrophotometer can be used to measure the light absorptions of this transparent material in the UEV region. When the sample is weak in transmitting light, particularly the opaque materials, those non-transparent material, then the measurement on the intensity of reflected light from the sensing material surface can be carried out by using reflectance spectrophotometry to inducer. Since the light does not penetrate the sample, the reflectance response will be based on the color intensity of the measurement, whereby lighter material color will reflect higher light intensity as light color reflects better than dark. All right, a little bit basic on the electronic transition between the electronic state of molecular compound on the right-hand side. At room temperature, chemical species are in their ground state, the lowest energy state. So when a molecular compound absorbs enough radiation, it will be excited to a higher electronic state. The amount of photon energy absorbed by the molecular compound is equal to the energy difference between the electronic states which can be characterized by its corresponding wavelength, the lambda. Emissions of photon occurs when the analyte is excited to the excited state, and when, and when it is at the excited state and it is unstable, and it will lose its energy of excitation and return to a lower energy state or ground state while releasing the excess energy in a form of emission that can be measured with the Fluorescent spectrophotometer. This process is called the relaxation process. So in UVB spectrophotometer, we are measuring the absorption's intensity, while in fluorescent spectrophotometer, we are measuring the emission intensity. Quantum top are colloidal semiconductor nanocrystals such as zinc sulfide, carbon sulfide, copper indium sulfide. They are small enough to give high quantum U. The frequency range of the emitted light by the fluorescent quantum dot is characterized by the optical band gap energy. Okay? When a photon energy is used to excite the electron of the quantum dot from the valence band to conduction band at higher energy level, okay? fluorescent emission occurs as the photon energy release while the electron returns to its ground state. The energy release is equal to the optical band gap energy. The optical band gap energy increases as the size of the quantum dot decreases. Consequently, the color of emitted light shifts from red to blue when the size of the quantum dot is smaller. In addition, quantum dots are highly resistant to photo bleaching, excellent resistant to chemical degradation, high photostability, and long luminescent lifetime, and that it is beneficial to be employed as the optical sensing probe. However, metal-based quantum dots are known to be toxic to vertebrate system, although they offer invaluable societal benefits, such as biomedical imaging, targeted drug delivery and cancer therapy. The synthesis and versatile applications of heavy metal-based quantum dots in medical and biological research, however, has slowly reduced as the introductions of the carbon-based quantum dot becomes a substitution candidate nowadays. Fiber optic sensor, which is sometimes called as optrot, it allows flexible sample measurement at various places because of the flexible fiber optic cable is used. The region phase can be immobilized at the end of a fiber optic or it is placed some distance away from the end of the probe. Interactions of the analyte with the region will create a change in the absorption, reflectance, fluorescence, or luminescence signal. When a sample is weak in transmitting light, particularly the opaque materials, those non-transparent materials, then the measurements of the intensity of reflected light from the sensing material surface can be carried out by using a reflectance spectrophotometry to induce it. The reflectance response will be based on the color intensity of the measurement, whereby light color material will reflect higher light intensity as light color reflects better than dark. Actually, this fiber optic cable consists of a bifurcated optical fiber uh, as a light guide with a fit fiber to transmit the light from the 
light source to the immobilized region or to the uh, excite or to excite the fluorescence of the sample. The fluorescent emissions or the reflected light will then travel back to the return fiber to a detector for measurement. This is one of the simple examples of a membrane-based uh, optical chemical sensor for aluminum ion detections by, by embedding the morin region in the polyacrylate membrane. Because of the transparent characteristic of the polymer it uses, it allows penetrations of light and that we can measure the color change of the membrane sensor before and after reactions with the aluminum ion with UVB spectrophotometer. Next is another example of the microsphere-based optical chemical sensor for the determinations of the dissolved ammonia. The chemical reagent used here is the pink colored cobalt ion. Upon reactions with the dissolved ammonia, it forms a blue complex. The cobalt ion is immobilized on the cation exchange resin via electrostatic reactions due to the presence of the negatively charged sulfonic functional group at the resin surface to allow electrostatic immobilizations of the positively charged cobalt ion. As the microbeads of the cation ion exchange resin is non-transparent to light, so reflectance spectrophotometer is used to measure the reflectance intensity of the material. Molecularly imprinted polymer, the MIP, can also be used as sensing receptors in optical sensor as it has high recognition ability with selective binding site. In this imprinting approach, the analyte is first mixed with a suitable functional reagent to form the complex. The example of chemical reagent used here for optical aluminum iron detections is, a, is the fluorophore 8 hydroxy quinoline 5 sulfonic acid as a fluorescent tag on reactive with the aluminum iron by calic matter interactions. This complex is then frozen by polymerization process on the metal iron are removed thereafter thereafter from the polymer matrix by washing it with the sodium fluoride regeneration solution to form a specific recognition material which is able to rebind with the martin ion. With this, the MIP with the specific sensing size become more specific to the chosen ion. There are so-called three generations of the bulk sensor. First generation biosensor is where the product of the region, normally due to the oxidation of the hydrogen peroxide, diffuses to the transducer and causes the electrical response. Second generation biosensor involves specific artificial redox mediator, the electrocatalyst between the reactions and the transducer in order to generate an improved electrical response. For example, medulla's blue, potassium ferrous cyanide, and or the hexacyanide three and the third generation bound sensor is where direct electron transfer between the enzyme redox center and the electrode is established to generate the electrical response. This condition happens when the enzyme molecule are covalently bound to the electrode surface and no product or mediator diffusion is directly involved. Example of first generation biosensor is the histamine biosensor with immobilized diamine oxidase on the carbon screen printed electrode. The immobilized diamine oxidase causes the oxidation deaminations of histamine to form the imidazole oxidaldehyde and the byproducts of ammonia and hydrogen peroxide, which normally oxidize electrochemically between 0.6 and 0.7 volts. The drawback of utilizing such a high potential in the uh, determination of histamine will render the biosensing system interfere with other easily oxidizable substances in the same potential range, such as, such as the uh, uric acid, ascorbic acid, glutathione, and acetaminophen in the real sample matrix detection later on. In order to reduce the working potential, 
uh, potassium hexacyanoferrate tree, the electron transfer mediator is electrodevastated on the electrode to act as the electron shuttling agent for the direct electron transfer from the oxidation of histamine to imidazole acetaldehyde by the immobilized diamine oxidase enzyme. And this producing a second generation power sensor, it is important to note that the redox fractions of the mediator is reversible. And this property allows the depositions of oxidized or reduced form of the mediator on the electrode to effect the same redox reaction. This diagram shows the typical uh, third generation spark sensor design. In view of the enzymes are protein molecules made from long chain of the amino acid residue. And this amino acid contain amine and carboxyl functional groups, along with the side chains specific to each amino acid. This allows spontaneous chemical absorption of amine functional groups of the enzyme on the electron surface, particularly the gold surface due to the high affinity of the amine functional groups towards the gold surface. This is to allow the enzyme molecule be immobilized in close proximity to the electrode for fast electron transfer purposes. For third generation about sensor, glucose oxidase is used as a molar enzyme. This glucose oxidase is a flavor protein composed of two identical subunits, each having a FAD core factor subunit as its redox center. When the glucose oxidase catalyzes the oxidation of glucose to the gluconolactin, the FD, FAD, the redox center, is reduced to the FADH2 and then oxidized by the molecular oxygen to form back the FAD, whilst the oxygen is reduced to the hydrogen peroxide. And due to the current advancement in nanotechnology, nanomaterials such as gonad particles, carbon nanotubes, graphene nanosheets, and some other semiconducting nanomaterial have been proved to be effective in achieving the direct electron transfer and the electrochemical behavior of the glucose oxidase on the carbon nanotubes has also been examined and shown to that the FAD redox center was remained intact with no loss of the enzyme activity. As the carbon nanotube are rich in the carboxyl uh, functional group, the carbon diimide coupling region can be used to activate the carboxyl functional groups of the carbon nanotube and subsequently couple with the amine functional groups of the enzyme to form the strong amide covalent bond. Chemical absorptions or covalent binding of gold particles usually require a binding function bridge, which couple the gold particles to the metal space. For example, aliphatic diamine and dithiol. The spontaneous absorption of the thiol and amine functional groups on the gold electrode allows layering of the gold particles to form the cell assemble monolayer. Since amine bearing compound can be spontaneously bound to the electrode, electrode surface, such as the gold surface, thus an uh, enzyme molecule can be directly deposited on the bulk uh, gold or the gold particles electrode without the use of any coupling reagent. Furthermore, it has been claimed that the nanometric edges of the gold particles can penetrate a little into the protein molecule to reduce the, sand, the distance between the electrode and enzyme redox site, thereby increase the electron transfer rate. For electrochemical transducer, potential metric transducer converts the changes in the distributions of charges into electrical potential signal. Movement of electrons produced in the redox reactions, on the other hand, can be measured by amperometric transducer in a form of electrical current response. Potential metric transducer measures current as a function of a control electrical potential and time, which results in current voltage display and impedance power sensor register changes in the electrical properties at their surfaces, either capacitance or resistance, affected by the interactions between the biorecognition element attached at the transducer surface and analyte presence in the sample solution. This is an example of amperometric biosensor constructed by using cytochrome C nitride reductase enzyme as a biosensing region to determine nitride ion concentration, whereby the enzyme is entrapped within the porous silica 
gel on the pyrolytic graphite electrode, a nitro ion is determined based on reductions reactions of the enzyme itself. Based on the enzymatic mechanism shown here, the enzyme undergoes reversible electrochemical uh, reductions, and the reductions of the nitrite to the ammonium ion is an irreversible chemical reaction. In order to determine the working potential for subsequent amplometry determinations of ammonium ion, the bioelectron is characterized by cyclic water matrix to obtain a typical catalytic shapes of current potential curve in the presence and absence of the nitro ion. In the absence of the uh, nitro ion, no catalytic peak is observed, whereas in the presence of the nit nitro ion, the anodic peak is difficult to detect and the corresponding reduction peak is determined at minus 0.4 watt. Hence, the reduction potential at minus 0.4 watt can be used as the operating potential for subsequent amperometric bioelectric calibration. This is because amperometry is an electrochemical method to detect changes in current at a constant potential. However, in this study, three different potentials were chosen, uh, which are close to or well below the reduction potential of negative 0.4 watt to run the amperometric experiment over the bioelectrode, such as negative 0.5 watt, negative 0.7 watt, and negative 0.9 watt. This is because lower potential is always preferred to avoid side reactions that may interfere with the biosensor response. As the reduction potential decreases, the linear response of the biosensor towards nitrate becomes wider. The amperometric response of the biosensor shows that the amperometric current response upon every nitrate additions is always prompt and fast to reach the steady state response. This indicates a fast electron transfer from the redox center of the immobilized enzyme to the electrode surface. This schematic diagram shows the stepwise fabrications of the water matrix GM DNA biosensor based on the acrylic microsphere and the golden particles, the carbon screen printed electrode. The carbon SPE is first coated with the golden particles, uh, followed by the acrylic microsphere. The DNA probe is then covalently immobilized onto the acrylic microsphere, while succinct my functional groups of the uh, microsphere. The presence of modified genes in DNA can be detected by hybridization of the target DNA with immobilized DNA probe using endocrinone as redox indicator during the DNA hybridization event and monitored by means of cyclic water matrix and differential pulse water matrix. This cyclic water monogram in the black curve shows the oxidation and reduction peak current of the endocrinone open intercalated between double-stranded DNA immobilized on the modified electrode. The endocrinone usually has an oxidation peak current at minus 0.4 volt and reduction peak at minus 0.6 volt. So from this CV, we can decide whether we want to choose to monitor the oxidation or the reductions of the endocrinone in the GM DNA detection. Looking at this differential pulse diagram, the oxidation of the endocrinone is chosen to be used to measure the GM DNA biosensor response towards various cDNA concentration. The biosensor DPV peak current response was found to increase proportionally with the increasing of the cDNA concentration, indicating the increasing of the DNA hybridization reaction rate that promotes the number of the endocrinone redox indicator intercalated between the immobilized double-stranded DNA bases on the electrode. This is another work using differential pulse water matrix to investigate the disposable copper ion sensor based on cell assembly of l cysteine on gonal particles modified screen printed carbon electrode. The carbon electrode was first modified by attaching gonal particles onto carbon electrode surface. A single calorie peak observed at approximately 0.9 volts indicates the peak position for water matrix gold oxide reductions to confirm the gonal particles layer has already attached at the electrode surface. This is then followed by cell assembly of the l cysteine the amino acid containing thiol functional groups for covalent immobilizations onto the gonal particles electrode. 
SCL cysteine possesses carboxyl functional group and amino functional group. It can act as the keratin ligand to form coordinate bonds with the copper ion to form the charge transfer complex that produces a kind of internal oxidation or reduction process to be quantified by PPV method. We can see that in the absence of the copper ion, a low background analytical signal was observed between minus 0.4 volts and 0.6 volts, and there is an increase in DPV peak current after accumulations of the amino acid electrodes in the copper ion solution. Potential metric bar sensor, on the other hand, make use of ion-selected electrode in order to transduce the biological directions into electrical signal. Normally, the potential metric bar sensor consists of an immobilized enzyme at the chief of the probe or from a pH meter where the catalyzed reactions generates or absorb hydrogen ion. So when the biological reactions involve changes in the hydrogen ion concentration, it will cause a change in pH, which may directly read from the pH meter displays in the form of electromotive force, the EMF, which is the electrical potential difference generated between the internal civil civil chloride electrode and external reference electrodes in milliwatt units. I'm um, using the formaldehyde power sensor as a model of our sensor to explain the working concept of potential metric power sensor. This potential metric formaldehyde power sensor is fabricated by using civil civil chloride electrode immobilized with alcohol oxidase enzyme on the acrylic microsphere, and they are physically absorbed on the hydrogen ion sensor that is made of a layer of cell plasticized acrylic microsphere immobilized with the hydrogen ion. When the immobilized alcohol oxidase enzyme catalyzes the oxidation of the form of dehyde to hydrogen peroxide and formic acid, the hydrogen ion associated from the formic acid is then detected by the selective layer for indirect potential metric quantifications to the form of concentration. This is the nurse equation relates the cell potential to the standard potential and to the activity of the free uncomplex ionic species, the Q, which refers to the hydrogen ion concentrations in this case. The nurse equation is more commonly written in the base 10 log form for temperature the T at 25 degrees Celsius, with R and F are the gas and Faraday constants as respectively, and N is the number of electron transfer in the cell, where RT over F is equal to 59 milliwatt. As you know, the linear equation is Y equal to MS plus C. So from these equations, the E here is refers to the EMS response that we obtain from the bow sensor as a result of the biological reactions here. And the E note here is the potential value intercept at the Y axis. The log 10 is the log for the hydrogen ion concentrations and 0 0.09, 0 0.8. 5.9 over n is the slope that refers to the sensitivity of the potential metric power sensor for every decade increase in the hydrogen ion concentrations at 25 degrees Celsius. So in this case, the higher the formal concentrations is added, the higher the hydrogen ion concentration is expected to be produced. So before we use the enzyme power sensor to quantify the formal concentrations, we need to assess the pH sensor performance alone without any Inside with different buffer pH to obtain a linear pH response range that the developed pH sensor can determine. And later, we immobilize alcohol oxidase enzyme on top of the pH sensor. Only then, we quantify the formaldehyde concentrations with the potential metric bar sensor. DPD metric bar sensor determines changes in the charge or electron transfer resistance induced by the biological reactions occurs at the transducer surface. Over here, I'm giving you an example of a label-free impedimentary DNA bar sensor based on the graphene non-sheet modified glassy carbon electron as a transducer for E. coli DNA detections. Graphene is a two-dimensional array of sp2 hybridized carbon atom in a honeycomb lattice that possesses exceptional mechanical, thermal, and electronic properties. 
This impedance dynamic sensor is a label-free transducer because no redox indicator is needed to determine DNA hybridization directions, whereas the hybridization between DNA probe and cDNA imparts a charge transfer resistance to the graphene transducer surface, which can be monitored by electrochemical impedance spectroscopy, the EIS. EIS is a powerful tool to analyze the complex resistance of a system and is very sensitive to changes on the electrode surface. In the field of biosensing, EIS is particularly suitable to detect biorecognition events that occurs at the electrode's electrolyte interface, such as DNA hybridizations and antigen antibody binding. In order to preserve high electron mobility in the graphene network, Surface functionalization of the graphene electrode is performed by non-covalent pi pi stacking of the pyrene derivatives, the one pyrene butyric acid, followed by immobilization of the DNA probe by the carbodiamide linkage. This figure shows the Nyquist plots for modified electrodes and the impedances of the modified electrode can be represented by the equivalent circuit here, where R ohm is a bulk solution uh, resistant, RCT is a charge transfer resistance on the transducer surface, CP is a constant phase element, and W is a wobble impedance resulting from diffusions. The charge transfer resistance of the electrode can be estimated from the interceptions of the semicircle with the x axis minus that of the bulk solution resistance, the R ohm. The larger the semicircle, the larger the charge transfer resistance. The inset here is the Nyquist plot for the graphene modified electrode with small semicircle means it imparted small charge transfer resistance as graphene nanoparticle has high electron conductivity properties. However, the phase functionalization of the graphene electrode with a pyrene derivative induce a higher charge transfer resistance as a result of the electrostatic repulsion between the periferostyanite redox couple and the negatively charged pyrene derivatives, and that impose a higher charge transfer resistance on the electrode surface. And after immobilization with the DNA probe, the charge transfer resistance of the electrode increased further, mainly due to the electrostatic repulsions between the peripheral stannite uh, redox species and the negatively charged DNA backbone. In this work, the DNA of E. coli is detected by monitoring the charge transfer resistance of the DNA electrode during DNA hybridization process. The Nyquist plots of the DNA electrode after incubation in different cDNA concentration show increasing charge transfer resistance with the increasing of the cDNA concentration. This is because upon DNA hybridization reactions, the formations of the negatively charged DNA duplexes on the electrode surface created a more repulsive forces with the periferosanized redox species, leading to a higher charge transfer resistance at a higher cDNA concentrations. Aptamer biosensor. There are three types of aptamers, namely DNA, RNA, and peptide aptamers. DNA and RNA aptamers are the most common types of aptamers. They are chosen from a pool of random nucleic acid sequences and put through several cycles for optimization with their target in a process called CLEX, the systematic evolution of ligands by exponential enrichment. These aptamers are single-stranded and typically around 15 to 16 nucleotide bases in length, and it is theoretically possible for aptamer to be used against any molecular target, such as toxin, peptides, protein, viruses, bacteria, small molecules, and even whole cells. Aptamers bind with high specificity and affinity, meaning that they could dis discriminate for their specific targets with high precision. Upon recognition for their target, aptamers bind by complementary nucleic acid base pairing. This base pairing creates secondary structures such as uh, short helical arms and single stranded loops. Combinations of these uh, secondary structures result in the formations of tertiary structures such as. This. So when this tertiary structure is formed, the entire aptamer falls into a stable complex with the target ligand. This is called aptamer 
target complex get a lot of hammer to bind to target via when the walls forces hydrogen bonding and electrostatic interactions. These three dimensional structures allow atomers to function like antibodies, which contrasts to traditional thinking, which held that DNA or RNA were linear and information holding structures. Because they are now structurally conforming to bind to their targets, this gives atomers a wide range of possible targets when compared with antibody, which requires antigen along with an immuno response for their target. This is a study on electrochemical insulin sensing utilizing DNA aptamer immobilized gold electrode. Generally, DNA oligos form their own tertiary structure depending on their sequence. Some guanine-rich DNA oligos form a g hearted comprised of four hydrogen-bonded guanine bases. In the structures of g hearted four guanine bases form a plant, and when g quartered planks are stacked, it is called g quartered DNA. This study utilizing guanine rich aptamer that forms G quadruplex that binds insulin selectively. Prior to insulin binding, this DNA aptamer forms a complex with hermine to effective peroxidase activity, as the immobilized hermine could electrochemically reduce hydrogen peroxide to water and gives a cathodic peak signal at minus 0.45 watt. In the absence of insulin, hydrogen peroxide could freely access to the hermine and electrochemically reduce at the gold electrode surface, and that increment in the electrochemical signal with time can be perceived. When insulin is introduced and bound to the immobilized DNA aptamer, it blocks the access of hydrogen peroxide to hermine, and that the electrochemical signal considerably reduces. Selectivity of the in of the DNA aptamer to insulin was also examined by comparing with the response to glucagon, which is a polypeptide hormone like insulin that regulates glucose in blood. As glucagon does not bind to DNA aptamer, hence it does not change the peroxidase activity of the immobilized DNA aptamer hermine's complex at the gold electrode surface. Thus, electrochemical insulin sensing based on its interference on the peroxidase activity by DNA aptamer hermine complex is established. With this, I end my presentation here today. Thank you.